Good morning, students. Once again, we are in the, here to discuss the problems of real number. In our last class, I have explained what the real number is and what are the classifications of this real number. On that very day, I told you the real number consists of two things. One is rational number, the other one is irrational number. Further, the rational number is a number which can be represented in the form of p by q, where both p and q are integers and q is not equal to zero. That we have seen on that day. At the same time, I told you that Irrational numbers are the numbers which cannot be represented in the form of p by q where both p and q are integers and q not equal to 0. On the basis of the information that I had given you on the last day, we will start today the first exercise, problems of the first exercise, exercise 1.1 from NCERT book. So pay attention students. The first question goes like this, is 0 a rational number? Can you write it in the form of p by q, where p and q are integers and q not equal to 0? So our answer will be yes, 0 is a rational number, undoubtedly, as it can be written in the form of 0 by 1 where both 0 and 1 are integers and 1 is not equal to 0. So I hope you have understood what I mean to say 0 is a rational number as it can be written in the form of 0 by 1 where both 0 and 1 are integers and 1 is not equal to 0 therefore 0 is a rational number. Now come to the second question says find 6 rational numbers between 3 and 4. 6 rationals between P and 4. Now students, and finite, any number of methods are there to find out the rational numbers in between two rational numbers. I will suggest one method which is which appears to me that it is very convenient and you will also appreciate that method and that is the equalizing the denominator method. What we will do? We will do 3 can be written as 3 by 1 and 4 can be written as 4 by 1. Now, we are required to find out 6 rationals. So, what we will do? We will take one more. That is 6 plus 1 is equal to 7. We will multiply both numerator and denominator by 7 and 7. And the result is 21 by 7. Same thing we will do over here again. 4 by 1 into 7 by 7. That is 28 by 7. Now, the 6 rationals, rational numbers are 22 by 7. 23 by 7, 24 by 7, 25 by 7, 26 by 7, and 27 by 7. If you count, you will find that there are exactly 6 rational numbers between 21 by 7 and 28 by 7. Now, what is 21 by 7? It is actually 3. It is equivalent rational number of 3. 28 by 7, it is the equivalent rational number of 4. And in between 3 and 4, thus we can write that there are these 3, these 6 rational numbers. Likewise, you can find out 
n number of rational numbers in between two given rational numbers. It is the property of the rational numbers that in between two given rational numbers there can exist infinite number of rational numbers. Hope you have understood this. Now come to question number three. The question says you have to find out five rationals between 3 by 5 and 4 by 5. 3 by 5 and 4 by 5. In between these two rationals, you have to find out five rational numbers. Now the thing is, in this question, again we will do the same thing. 3 by 5 can, we are required to find out five rational number. Better we write. 5 rational numbers between 3 by 5 and 4 by 5 are. Now, we will write 3 by 5. You see, in 3 by 5 and 4 by 5, we are having a common denominator and that the common denominator is 5. So 3 by 5, we are required to find out 5 rational number. So we will multiply 3 by 5 with 6 and we will divide it by 6. We will get 18 by 30 and 4 by 5. Again, we will multiply both numerator and denominator by 6. And in this way, 4 into 6 in, by 5 into 6 we will get 24 by 30. We are now, what is 18 by 30? It is not an another rational number. It is actually the equivalent ra rational number which is equivalent to 3 by 5 or 3 by 5 or 18 and 18 by 30 are the same rational number and likewise 4 by 5 and 24 by 30 are also the same rational numbers. So, the five rational numbers are, five rationals are 19 by 30, 20 by 30, 21 by 30, 22 by 30 and 23 by 30. You count, you will find exactly five rational numbers I have written on the board. And in the question, five rational numbers are asked. We have equalized the denominator. We have find out the equivalent rational number. And likewise, we have calculated. The only thing you have to remember, if you are required to find out seven rational number, you take eight, at least eight by eight. You multiply both numerator and denominator by eight. And then you write down the required number of rational numbers. Students, now we will discuss the question number four, state whether the following statements are true or false, give reasons for your answer. We have to state that whether the given statements are true or it is false, and if we are saying it's true, why it is true, if it is false, why it is false, we have to give the reason. The very first question is, every natural number is a whole number. Every natural number is a whole number. Now, see, in our last class I told you natural numbers are counting numbers and they are 1, 2, 3, 4, dot, 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 up to infinity. These are the natural numbers. And what about whole numbers? All the natural numbers, including 0, is called whole numbers. That is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, dot, 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 dot. So, due to the existence of only one element 0, there is a difference between natural number and whole number. Set of natural number and whole number. Now, every natural number is a whole number. See, all these are the natural numbers and they are also there in the set of whole numbers so the given statement is true that every natural number is a whole number because 
what what will be your justification your justification is the set of all numbers contains each and every natural numbers number 2 every integer is whole number now see one thing every integer is whole number the question is every integers integer is a whole number this is the thing now in my last class i had explained integers are of three types one is negative integer second one is zero third one is positive now every integer is whole number negative integers are not whole number zero is a whole number so the given statement is false because there are negative integers also these two are the whole numbers positive integers and zero consists of whole number but negative integers are not whole number your statement every integer is a whole number thus becomes false number 3 every rational number is a whole number every rational number is a whole number false again why every rational number is a whole number this is a false statement the very reason is 5 by 7 i am writing 5 by 7 is a rational number 5 is an integer 7 is an integer and 7 is not equal to 0 but 5 by 7 is not a whole number but when we are talking about 3 what about 3 yes 3 is a whole number 3 can but 3 as as well as 3 is also a rational number because that 3 can be written as 3 by 1 So three is a whole number as well as a rational number, whereas five by seven is a rational number but it is not a whole number. So the statement that every rational number is a whole number is false. It may or may not be a rational number may be a whole number or may not be a whole number. A rational number may be a whole number. This is the example. and a rational number may not be a whole number 5 by 7 is an example so dear students this is all about the exercise 1.1 i hope you will go through this exercise you will solve by yourself i have explained each and every sum and for exercise 1.2 which consists of irrational number from your ncert book in our next class we will meet till then goodbye